Do thoughts create our reality? Hello, my name is Susie Porter, and I help women rewrite their lives so that they can create their happily ever after. This morning, I was thinking about thoughts, <laughs> and specifically, how our thoughts affect our lives. Now, what does it mean? We hear it all the time, your thoughts create your reality, but what does that mean? So let's break it down, right? Imagine your mind. Imagine that your mind is calm and free of thoughts. Now imagine one little thought or idea. Let's say that this one thought is an optimistic, encouraging thought. Like, um, I'm proud of myself. From this one little happy thought, your brain is going to connect to other happy thoughts. It's a, like a magnet. And from those thoughts will create happy, optimistic sentences and paragraphs and stories. And from those stories, positive beliefs and, and even your identity. From that one thought, I'm proud of myself. You'll remember all the things you've done in your life that you are proud of. You might remember uh, things that people have shared with you of how you've helped them or inspired them. That one little thought, it kind of acts like a divining rod to attract and find and pull to it all similar thoughts. Now imagine that this one thought in your mind is a negative one. I'm a loser. <laughs> then the same principle is going to work only it's going to attract all those negative thoughts and stories and beliefs and that will create a completely different identity right imagine where one thought can take you emotionally imagine the stories the beliefs and the identity that these thoughts are creating within you now, according to brain researchers, 80% of our thoughts are negative. And, you know, I've researched the brain for years as a teacher, and, and the scientists don't agree on exact numbers. I mean, I don't know how they quantify this stuff anyway. But researchers say we think anywhere from 12,000 to 60 or 70,000 thoughts a day. And that if 80% of them or most of them are negative, and also about 80 or 90 or 95 percent of our thoughts are the exact same thoughts that we thought the day before so it seems to me that our thoughts are one of the most important things that we need to pay attention to right because if if 80 percent of my thoughts are negative and 90 percent of my thoughts are the exact same negative thoughts i thought yesterday my life will never change and i want to change my life right and maybe you do too so our minds, the good news is that our minds are powerful, right? Probably our most powerful asset. And the thing is, it's totally up to us to be the guardians at the gate, right? Of what we allow into our thoughts. The kingdom of heaven is within. Within where? Our liver, our kidney? No, our mind, right? And our heart. Whew. So if our thoughts do actually lead to what shows up in our lives, if our thoughts create our reality, what could be more important than noticing them and taking care of them? Just as we would take care of a garden or anything that we loved, we have to take care of the thoughts in our mind. Um, for years, I went to Weight Watchers, and I remember they used to share this uh, picture with us. It was like concentric circles. And at the very center of the circle was the word identity. Now, according to this picture, our identity would determine everything else in our world, our behavior, our environment, and our results because of who we believe that we are, which would explain why so many people reach their goal weight and then gain it back, um, including me, by the way, <laughs> and why some people would win the lottery I never win the lottery, but they win the lottery or they become rich and famous and then they self-sabotage and become poor and infamous. It's because deep down inside, who do they believe that they are, right? You have to believe 
that you're worthy to be wealthy and thin and successful because that hidden belief, that identity will determine everything in your life. And until we really believe that we're worthy, our subconscious mind and our beliefs won't let us, won't let us succeed. Never, ever underestimate the power of a thought, one small thought. Actually, Jesus in the Course in Miracles <laughs> says that this whole entire world that we humans have created is the result of one tiny mad idea, which I think is so funny. I mean, just the language of it, that he calls it a tiny mad idea. He says, um, in the Course, into eternity, where all is one, there crept a tiny mad idea, at which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. In his forgetting, did the thought become a serious idea and possible of both accomplishment and real effects. So those two sentences say a lot, don't they? In eternity, all is one. And yet somehow human beings got this crazy idea that we're separate from God. This crazy idea where we forgot to laugh. I mean, laughter is so important. Seriously, <laughs> when we forgot to laugh, everything fell apart. We really believed that we were separate from God. That's Adam leaving the Garden of Eden, not God kicking us out. We left because we believed this stupid idea that we weren't one with God, that we, all, we weren't one with God and we weren't one with each other. So even Jesus Christ himself says that one tiny mad idea was the genesis of the creative power of thoughts. So for us personally, we really have to consider that thought, the Course in Miracles says that thought always creates form on some level. Thoughts are things and they have creative power. Everything that exists was for, first a thought or an idea. So for today, one day at a time, just for today, <laughs> just try to notice what you're thinking. It doesn't have to be a big, heavy, spiritual practice, boring, miserable. You know, even Jesus says forgetting to laugh is really dumb and powerful, right? Laughter. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Laughter is the best medicine. And I agree 100%, right? And we took the tiny mad idea seriously and look where it's gotten us, right? Mm -mm. Try to notice the thoughts that you're thinking. If you're feeling upset or angry or hurt or sad, just stop for a minute if you can and pause and try to think. I've done this and it really works. What was the first thought I thought that started me on this track of thinking? What was the very first thought? And if you have time and if you want to feel better, sit down and write that first thought. And then you can rewrite it no matter what it is, no matter what your tiny mad idea is. It's possible that it's a false premise. It might not be true. It might not be true. All the mental anguish and suffering and pain in our brains is so often based on a faulty premise. And it makes sense. We've got, you know, our, our reptilian brains are tens of millions of years old, right? All their job is the reptilian brain, that survival brain is to, uh, it has a negative bias because it's number one super objective is to keep you alive and to keep you safe and comfortable. And change is not safe and comfortable back in uh, caveman days, change could could get you killed, right? So that's why the uh, physiology and the biology of the brain has a negative bias because it's a survival brain. But the good news is we have a frontal cortex that is capable of higher thinking. And what's what's absolutely true is that you and only you are in charge of 
your frontal cortex, your reptilian brain, all the parts of your amazing, miraculous, beautiful, powerful brain are in your care. So take time today to notice what you're thinking. Really notice. All the great spiritual teachers say that the answer is, they call it different things. Some people call it awareness. Some people call it presence. Ram Das used to call it be here now. The power of now, right? It's all the same thing. It's being present, being aware, noticing the thoughts, and not letting a tiny mad idea ruin your day and your life. You are the guardian at the gate of the thoughts in your mind. It's the good news and the bad news, right? The good news is you're not a robot. The good news is you have free will and agency over your brain and your thoughts. It's not really the bad news, but it's kind of like the sobering news is that you've got to really become aware and take charge of your thoughts. It's 100% up to you to manage and to take care of your thoughts. And I guess I want to ask you this question. What will be created from the thoughts that you're thinking right now? What identity are you feeding? What are you going to think and say about yourself today that will create your reality? Simple. Again, not easy, but it is simple. Your thoughts are a magnet. They will bring to you or repel from you what manifests and shows up in your reality. So today, take care of your mind. Take care of your thoughts. Notice your thoughts because those thoughts are going to create your feelings and those feelings are going to motivate and inspire your actions and those actions will create your reality. It's very simple, but it takes awareness. It takes presence. Stop and unpack the suitcase of your brain. Notice the very first thought. Every, all the stories your brain is telling you started with one little teeny tiny thought and never, ever underestimate the power of one thought. All right, take good care of your mind today, of the thoughts in your mind. They will create your reality.